Yo, what's good E7 fam? Pat here back with another Epic 7 how to play video. And in this one, we're gonna be talking about Loki, one of the best girls in this entire game, and that is Cecilia. If you've never seen one of these how to play videos, I go super in depth and try and cover most things that you would wanna know about the character, including their stats, their skills, some possible end game equipment builds for you to try out, as well as where I think they work in both PVE as well as PVP. So with our introduction out of the way, Let's talk about Cecilia's stats. Cecilia is a fire knight of the Ares Zodiac symbol. She shares a stat line with Tywin, Lilius, and Bellion. Taking a closer look at her stats, she has 821 attack, 6,751 health, 110 speed, 648 defense, 15% critical hit chance, 150% critical hit damage, 5% dual attack chance, 18% effectiveness, and no effect resistance. This is my favorite stat line for a knight to have in Epic 7 because it is very fast. I believe it is actually the fastest amongst all knights in the game, while still having very high HP and good starting effectiveness. If there's one thing I hate about this stat line, it's actually that 648 defense. I don't know why, but it feels a lot harder to clear the 1500 defense hurdle on an Ares knight when compared to some of the other zodiac symbols. As a bit of trivia before moving on to the skill section, in the English dub of Epic 7, Cecilia is voiced by Cassandra Lee Morris, who you can hear in this game as Akades as well as both versions of Chloe. She is also well known for other video game and anime voice acting roles, such as Morgana from Persona 5, Isaka Taiga from Toradora, and one of my personal favorites, Nero Claudius from the Fate franchise. In the Japanese dub of Epic 7, however, Cecilia is voiced by Yui Hori, who you can hear as characters such as Chie Satanaka from Persona 4, Naru Narusagawa from Love Hina, as well as the girl who only knows what she knows, Tsubasa Hanakawa from the Monogatari franchise. Cecilia's S1 is Deliverance. It has a 0.7x attack multiplier, as well as a 7% max health multiplier. It has a 35-50% to 50 chance to defense break the target for two turns. Additionally, if that target has an attack down debuff, there is an extra 25% chance that the defense break will actually proc, making it a total of up to 75% chance to defense break. Cecilia's S2 is Steel Cloudburst. You acquire two souls upon usage, and it has a three-turn cooldown. It is an AoE attack with a 0.4x attack multiplier. Additionally, it has a 6% max health multiplier. There is an 85-100% to chance, depending on Malagora, for this attack to decrease the attack of all enemies for two turns, as well as dispels one debuff from each of those enemies. Steel Cloudburst might not seem like much on paper, but it does have a number of nifty augments and things that make it actually a very good move, and we'll talk more about that in the exclusive equipment section right after this one. Cecilia's S3 is the super awesome sounding Ruinous Retribution. You acquire two souls upon use, and it has a 4-5 to five turn cooldown depending on Malagora. It is an AoE attack with a 0.6x attack multiplier. Additionally, it has a 12% max health multiplier. There is an 85-100% to 100 chance, depending on Malagora, for this move to provoke all enemies for one turn. Additionally, it grants your entire team immunity for two turns, as well as a barrier to Cecilia herself for two turns, obviously to protect her from all those shots she's about to take from provoking the enemy team. That barrier, by the way, from all of my testing, seems to indicate that it is a 20% max health multiplier, so keep that in mind. Ruinous Retribution, honestly, I feel like is one of the more underrated S3s in the game. This skill is really overloaded. It has solid damage for a non-damage dealing character, and having a AoE provoke at a 100% rate is actually pretty backbreaking. I think that's why this move is not super great on the first turn of the game. Because if Cecilia, the fastest knight in the game, could actually go first and reliably provoke the entire enemy team, it would basically be akin to having another character like Angel of Light Angelica or a Fairy Tale Tenebria, something that just locks your opponent out of the game at the start. And that's kind of 
you know, toxic when you think about it from a gameplay uh, standpoint, having a character that can consistently do that. That's why I think they did what they did with this move. But even ignoring the fact that you can't really use this move right off the rip in a lot of scenarios in PvP, the Provoke is still really strong, and the Barrier provides quite a bit of protection for this character. On top of that, two-turn immunity buff for your entire team, I feel like is one of the more underrated things in this entire game. There are so many things in PvP that remove one-turn immunity at this point, but two-turn immunity is very difficult still to remove for a lot of characters. There are very few characters I feel like that can actually deal with it. So in a pinch, Cecilia on her first turn can at least give your entire team immunity, which will lock out specific uh, styles of characters, specific styles of compositions. Cecilia's Soul Burn reduces the skill cooldown of Steel Cloud Burst by two turns at the cost of 10 souls. This doesn't seem like much when you think about it, but essentially you're able to dispel buffs from the enemy every single turn as long as you keep soul burning it and keeping them loaded up with debuffs. There's obviously only a decreased attack on this now, but it does get a bit better when we talk about the exclusive equipments in the next section. I find that this is particularly potent in Guild War offense, and it's also particularly potent in specific PvE scenarios such as trying to clear Dagger Sakar quests or trying to clear specific stages in Advent. When it comes to Malagora priorities, I think most players want to plus four all of the skills on Cecilia, not necessarily plus five. But the two I think you want to land plus four on first are the S1 Deliverance for the increased defense break chance, as well as on Ruinous Retribution, the S3, for not only the cooldown, but the increased provoke chance. These two moves are incredibly potent, and I feel like having them at plus four gives you the most amount of bang for your buck on the character. After that, I would take Steel Cloud Burst to plus four because, again, you do want to increase the effect chance as high as possible on all the moves. It's just this one feels the worst out of the box depending on how you choose to play Cecilia. Before moving on to the build section, we have to talk about Cecilia's exclusive equipment, which is Black Winter Spear. As always, with all of my calculations in the build section, I'm assuming you are on a 16% effectiveness Black Winter Spear. As always... Each exclusive equipment comes with three different modes and you get to choose one of them. The first of which makes it so that the defense break chance on the S1 Deliverance is increased by 10%. Having a 50 versus 60% defense break chance isn't really that insane. And when you factor in the additional defense break chance from 75 to 85% chance, it really doesn't get too much better there anyway. You're still roughly at either a 50-50 or a three-fourths chance in a lot of scenarios. So I think for most players, skipping deliverance is probably the right idea. The second exclusive equipment makes it so that Steel Cloud Burst gains a two-turn slow when using it. This is actually insane, and I think in almost every scenario, this is the best option for most players. You don't realize how strong speed down is in a lot of PvE scenarios until you actually have it. Clearing the Dagger Sakar challenges for a lot of the expeditions becomes a breeze with this EE, as well as having the correct support and damage dealers on the team. This helps out a ton, and there is a noticeable difference between having the slow and not having the slow. So I really think this one is very strong. If you are trying to play Cecilia for expeditions or for something like Advent in the future or hard PvE content, definitely make sure you pick this one up. The third EE makes it so that unhealable is given to the entire enemy team for two turns instead of that slow you would have gotten from the second ee i think this one is nice to have and i think you should hold on to a copy of this one because there are very niche scenarios where unhealable can be useful but for the most part the slow is generally better in almost every single scenario cecilia is one of the most underrated knights in epic 7 at least in my opinion she is often overshadowed by her ML counterpart, Fallen Cecilia, and it's pretty easy to understand why. Fallen Cecilia has basically been the best source of damage mitigation for almost, what, three years at this point? Very few knights stand out compared to her, and I think the problem is made worse for Cecilia simply because many players view her as just an imprint to make their FCCs stronger. This character, as she exists in her current form, is one of the most powerful and confident PvE knights in the entire game. 
She's easily the best blooming Snaglitch Knight in the entire game and has quickly cemented herself as the premier Pain Pursuer Maroi Knight as well. If Expeditions aren't your thing, Cecilia is also a viable option in certain Abyss floors and in the most recent form of Advent that we've got, she was one of the best possible options for clearing the second stage, which many players consider to be the actual hardest part. On top of all of that, she's an amazing character in Guild War offense as well as Arena offense. With how many debuffs Cecilia has at her disposal, she can lock down enemy teams and manipulate the AI into a lot of unfavorable scenarios. A well-timed Ruinous Retribution can take a lot of heat off of specific allies and get you some easy wins that normally wouldn't be possible against human opponents. There's no denying that Fallen Cecilia is still the game's strongest knight, but just because Cecilia isn't the best pick in World Arena right now, and you don't see her in Hunt one-shot teams, doesn't mean that this character is not worth building. I'd argue as we get more and more PvE content in the future, this character's value is simply going to skyrocket. For the first build that I'm going to show you, it is a generalist build on Cecilia that can be used almost anywhere, whether that's in Expeditions, Abyss, Advent, Arena Offense, Guild War Offense, or even, if you are so brave to do so, World Arena. The primary sets are Speed and Immunity, however if you don't intend to use this character in PvP at all, you can play Speed Hit. I personally play Revenge Set over Speed Set on Cecilia because I like the synergy that it has with her S3 Ruinous Retribution. You will provoke the entire enemy team and they will deal a ton of damage to Cecilia which allows her to get a huge boost of speed and therefore land a lot more debuffs over the course of a game. If they choose to ignore her entirely and you don't want to use the S3 Ruinous Retribution because she'll be most likely holding Arius, she will take a decent chunk of damage and thus get the speed boost which will allow her to take her second turn more quickly and allow you to land that very punishing Ruinous Retribution that we talked about in the skill section. For the desired stats, I have 1437 attack. This is simply Cecilia's attack with an I-90 sword with a plus 30 Arius on it. Defense is 1500. I find that this is the most difficult stat to hit while keeping all of the other stats reasonably high. And that is again because Cecilia's defense is just okay as a knight. It's not super amazing. 25k HP. Pump this up as high as you can go after you get over 1500 defense and you accomplish the speed and other goals. I've seen as high as 27k. I personally have around 26 and change at the moment. For speed, you want 220 or better. I have seen 235 or 240 while maintaining this level of speed. Again, it is going to depend entirely on your gear. I have decided to lowball it so that more people have access to a functional Cecilia rather than simply giving you a stat line for a higher end set of gear. No critical hit chance or critical hit damage on this character because she is not a damage dealer. Then we have 100% effectiveness and that is so that we can land those debilitating debuffs on certain soul weavers and certain knights as long as they are not cleansers they don't have a bunch of er this level of effectiveness will allow you to hit all of them there is a variation that i have seen in the past that has decided to scrap all of the effectiveness in exchange for 85 percent critical hit chance i personally do not play this build and i have not played this build in the past but i do know that just like with fallen cecilia there are people who prefer to have the critical hit chance on the character so that they actually contribute some amount of damage if you are one of those aggressive players that wants your knight to actually feel like it does damage and have more of an impact outside of just you know holding an arius and you don't really care about landing debuffs on knights and soul weavers you can go for that 85 percent critical hit chance otherwise i would probably stick with the 100 percent effectiveness and for the right side i'm going to be assuming you are still on that 100 percent effectiveness for my average piece calculations. For the recommended pieces here, I'm on an HP percentage necklace and an HP percentage ring. The boots are on speed. The artifact is Arius because this is most likely a character that is there to absorb damage and protect the team and it is a four star and the easiest to get. If you have other dedicated Arius holders and you simply want to bring Cecilia as a fourth man in a specific kind of protect the king, save the queen style composition, you can play her on Adamant Shield as an off tank. She does work really well with that artifact. 
The last one here is Sword of Azera, which is actually what I personally play her on when I only care about using her in PvE, specifically Expeditions. It gives the most amount of damage reduction in those game modes. It just doesn't really protect the team. It simply just allows Cecilia to take the most amount of punishment while still staying alive. Looking at the average piece, we have 22% HP, 17% defense, and 8 speed. In the last slot, you want either effectiveness, that critical hit chance we talked about if you are trying to go for that kind of bruiser-ish build, or flat HP. If you cannot hit 22% HP on each piece, it is really important that you take HP percentage and flat HP on the piece in order to achieve your goals. So the second variation that I want to talk about is one that I only put here, I feel like, for completeness sake. As you remember from some of my previous videos, like how to play Landy, I talk about how sometimes having an unpredictable build can win you a lot of games. That's what this build is for Cecilia. It drops a lot of bulk in exchange for a lot of speed in order to try to take turn one against a slower composition or a composition that might not have immunity and land that S3 Ruinous Retribution and win an entire game. This is more of a PvP world arena style focus build. I don't think it is very good at all in the current meta as of the recording of this video. But again, I feel like I have to include it for completeness sake because I have seen Cecilia's in this style over the many seasons that I have played in world arena. So for a fast disrupt their build, we're gonna be on speed immunity. Again, if we don't take first, we wanna be able to protect ourselves from some debuffs. But if you're confident that your Cecilia will take first, then you can play speed hit or even speed broken set if you're really just trying to maximize that speed. Looking at the desired stats, we have dropped our defense to 1200 defense. So we have some amount of bulk. We're not entirely glass cannon at this point, but I feel like 1500 defense while maintaining a high speed is a little bit unrealistic for many, many players. For the health, I have 20K HP here. You'd be surprised if you only play a health necklace and a health ring and no other health stats. This character still has like 19K and change health. She's very, very tanky. So 20K, again, we've tried to strip out a lot of the bulk here in favor of speed. At speed, I have 260 as the minimum. That is roughly around 15 to 16 speed average per piece. However, if you have better gear, you can go higher. Around 270 is about 18 speed average per piece. And some crazy whales out there are people with just insane gear, way better speed gear than I'll ever have. You can probably even push for 280 at 20 average a piece or even like 285 at like 21 or so on and so forth. Nothing has changed here on the crit hit chance or damage. I would not try to build crit hit chance on this build as a bruiser. This is simply for the disruption, which is why we still have 100% effectiveness. Take a look at the right side gear. We are on an HP percentage necklace and HP percentage ring, although I guess you could still play an effectiveness ring if you wanted to. A lot of people have high effectiveness speed rings, so go for that if you really want it. Boots are going to be speed still because we want to take turn one or as close to turn one as possible. Looking at the artifact, I'm still on Arius and the logic is because Blue Rose, when she was used as a fast cleaver or a fast cleave opener, used Arius. So I don't really see the logic of why you couldn't do the same here with Cecilia. You could also play her on Adamant Shield or even something like Rise of a Monarch if you so choose. Looking at the per piece average, it's 7% defense, 3% HP, 16 speed or better, and 11% effectiveness. For PvP teammates, for Cecilia, she really excels in those save the queen slash protect the king style compositions. So you really want to pair her with three things. You want to pair her with hard carry characters, characters where if they're well protected, they can win the game by themselves. Think of characters such as Landy or Spectre Tenebria. She's also really good as an off tank with other Arius holders or Adamant Shield holders. Obviously, she works really well with Fallen Cecilia and Adventure or Raz in a lot of scenarios. And when we take a look at the Soul Weavers that you're going to use to sustain up Cecilia as well as your carry, obviously Revivers are the best, such as Ruel of Light and Maid Chloe. This character is very good at PvE as well, so I really wanted to also include some teammate suggestions for the expeditions that this character really excels at because any other PvE content is going to wildly vary depending on what it actually is. So this is really all I can do, but it, I think it is important to take note of some of these characters. For Blooming Snaglitch, the two best options to pair with Red Cecilia are actually the two free-to-play options, which are Mercedes and Bomb Model Kana. 
Mercedes, we've already covered a generalist build for in how to play Mercedes, so you can check that out. But Bomb Model Kana is actually the best healer that you can play alongside of Red Cecilia for Blooming Snaglitch. The reason why she is a healer is because of the five-star artifact, Bloodstone. You don't need a healer because of how frequently Kana attacks and therefore how frequently she will keep Red Cecilia topped off. So if you have Bloodstone, you have no reason not to pick up Bomb Model Kana for free from your connections. If you don't have her, you can use characters like Mascot Hazel or Tamarin as a healer instead. To round out the damage dealers for Blooming Snaglitch, Ball and Cezanne is the best option. However, other heroes such as Red Tenebria and Kron can work as well. For the Expedition Pain Pursuer Maroi, the best teammate to pair with Cecilia is actually Cerise, who is getting a limited rerun next week as of the recording of this video. She lets you double up on all the things that makes Cecilia great. You get double the amount of slows, you get extra defense breaks thanks to Miss Confier, the artifact, and you also get to double up on damage thanks to the guaranteed dual attack. After that, the best damage dealer to pair with Red Cecilia for Pain Pursuer Maroi is actually Sermia, who is currently available alongside Cecilia as of the recording of this video. If you do not have her, I highly recommend picking her up, but you should prioritize Cerise more than that. Sermi is not a PvP hero, just like Cecilia isn't really super great at PvP either, but she is a top tier PvE character, and I do have a guide for her here on this channel as well. Other characters to consider to pair with your Red Cecilia for Pain Pursuer Maroi include Zealot Carmen Rose, Euphine, Top Model Lulica, and Green Asaria. As of the recording of this video, Fire Cecilia is not exactly the greatest pick in high-end world arena. You don't really ever see her in the High Champion, Emperor, or Legend ranks. But she can be used at lower and intermediate ranks if you do not have some of these stronger mitigation sources such as Fallen Cecilia or Crimson Armin. You can choose her in those scenarios. She still is an Arius holder and therefore is a relatively safe pick at most levels of play. Where I think this character really shines, though, is actually in Guild Wars. She's incredible against Fallen Cecilia defenses. Any kind of defenses that are trying to take the game long and grind it out, playing a similar playstyle to her own. Having a tank and then a carry DPS such as a Landy that might be hiding behind stealth, and then either a secondary DPS or a Soul Weaver to try to sustain and keep that Fallen Cecilia and that Landy on the board. She's excellent against playing against those compositions. The Fallen Cecilia will use her S3 to give skill nullifier, which you can promptly knock down with uh, her S2, Steel Cloud Burst, which will also be able to remove all the barriers from the enemy team, give them all slows, and then give them all attack down. So that seriously hampers the performance of the enemy team. And then with that defense break on her S1, you can basically turn anyone on your team into a tank buster. I just think that she has all the tools to really grind out those tanky, durable guild board defenses. And that's where I think if you're trying to play this character in any form of PvP, I think that's really where she shines, where she's the best at. Cecilia is a red hero as well as a damage mitigating knight, so she has basically the same bad matchups you'd expect a fire character to have as well as a knight to have. She's not super good against a lot of blue characters such as Rem or Kisei, and she's not really super good against tank busting characters either such as Luna or Straze. And obviously, being a debuff centric hero, she's not super good against cleansers either such as Elena or Mediator Kowarik. And that is going to do it for the how to play on Cecilia. Hopefully this was of some help to you all. I will be doing a how to play on Remnant Violet next. I just wanted to make sure that I had all of the information before doing the should you pull section on him since we are going to be getting a new Moonlight 5 star being unveiled later on in the following week as of the recording of this video. If you really enjoyed this video, please consider liking or subscribing. It really helps out the channel a ton. Leave me a comment down below and let me know which characters you want to see on another how to play for Epic 7. And if you want to check out other characters I've done, there should be a playlist on your screen now. As always, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Later.